Hello world, uh, my name is Jimmy Edwards. I'm the owner and proprietor of JE Guitars and I build my own line of guitars right here in Texas. And uh, I get videos and questions and how do you make a guitar, how do you build a guitar, did you go to a certain luthier school, uh, did you work at a certain guitar manufacturer and no on all of them. I just really got on the internet, researched and taught myself. And uh, I wish that I would have had something like what I'm going to do when I first started out because it would have made it a lot easier. So the first thing we're going to talk about is picking woods. Um, there's lots of suppliers. Nobody really tells you who supplies them their wood and there's good reason behind that. It's uh, just a... Uh, protecting your area sort of thing. It's just, uh, you know, you can go online, type in flame maple for sale, things like that. But, uh, we're going to go through start to finish on a build that I'm doing right now, or that I've got coming up, and uh, I'm going to try to show you step by step how I build a guitar. And this can all be done with tools that you can have access to. I bought one of these videos one time from someone saying, oh yeah, you know, uh, on eBay, how to build your own guitar, and this was a long time ago, and uh, it was not a, a good video. Um, I sure learned how to build one of their guitars, and it would have been great if I had access to all their jigs and fixtures and special custom-made tools that they had, especially just for them. Perfect. I could go build one of those, but uh, doesn't help me build my own line. So I want y'all to have that. And uh, I guess the first thing I'm gonna talk about is wood. And uh, I pick out all the wood myself. I'm a one-man operation. I do it all, from the initial cutting of the wood to the final sanding, spraying the finish, buffing, frets. I do everything myself. And uh, this guitar here is going to have, this is called Zeracote, or Zeracote is what I call it. I'm not going to add the extra flare in there. And this is a neck board. Uh, I get a fingerboard usually from the same wood, but uh, this one's a little too thin to cut a quarter inch strip off of, so uh, I do have some other Zeracote that's similar to this, so I'm going to match the two together. And I scarf joint all my necks. I don't, I don't add a heel block. And I don't take a big, thick piece of wood and make one neck out of it. I think it's wasteful. I think it's cost prohibitive. And uh, I just like the way that I do it. Uh, I don't have a real thick heel cap like most other guitars. It's kind of like a fender in regards to that, how thick the heel is. Uh, it's not like a PRS or a Gibson or, you know, they're like the Warrior guitars. But I, I scarf joint, it's a lot less wasteful. And uh, scarf joining is one of those things that people get really frustrated by, but I'm going to show you how I do it, and it's, it's not hard uh, once you get the, this little trick down. It's really not that hard. Uh, this is the top. Flame maple. That's a good picture of it. I like to get them where they're at least three quarters of an inch thick. Sometimes if it's really outstanding, I'll buy the half inch thick. But, uh, I like to have a little bit of meat to play with. And um, it's usually about how thick my tops are. Um, I don't have a uniform thickness on tops. I try to make the bodies a certain thickness. And some people like them thinner, so I'll do it thinner sometimes. I do have a standard thickness on overall body, but I mean, if there's a really outstanding half inch top, I'll add an extra quarter inch of body wood for it. And this is the body wood. They wanted it. Sapelli, ribbon Sapelli. Uh, this is one and an eighth inch thick. Uh, one and three eighths, maybe? I haven't checked it, sorry. Um, good wood uh, it's not too expensive and uh, once you go through and get everything sanded and done right it, it look, really looks good and it's pretty easy to 
work with. It's a hard, hard wood, but it's not bad to work with. Um, maple is harder than this. Uh, these are the kind of shape, this the shape the guitar is going to be. This is called my JAT model. Um, I took a uh, Telecaster, a Les Paul, and a PRS, and I put them all together into a shape that I liked. So uh, don't worry about that right there. That's going to be going away. But, uh, this neck on here is zero coat. I really like zero coat. And I did the dot inlays in the form of a constellation. So uh, when they turn the lights off, these are the lumen lays, and they grow. They glow green and blue. And on the sides, same thing. My 12th fret is marked with two blues, and the rest are green. And I have a different neck pattern than everyone else. But I, I don't. I mean, that's kind of one of my things. So I don't really want to get too much into that. But. Uh, I have standardized my uh, inlays now, and this is my standard inlay pattern. I'm also an RN on top of the guitar builder, so I wanted something that reflected that. And this is what I came up with, and I really like it. Uh, this is going on my own, that's going on my own personal guitar. This is Brazilian rosewood, and. Uh, there's places out there that will charge you $1,200 for a Brazilian rosewood fretboard, and that is fucking insane. This was like $75. If you pay $1,200 for a fucking fretboard, call me. I'll sell, to, I'll sell you the raw piece for half price. A third of the price. Shit. No, I mean, there's lots of ripoffs in the guitar world. Lots of it. And this is a guitar for me. That I've been building for myself. You can see you got that little, I don't have that on standard, I just haven't worked much on that one since I've gotten it. And uh, flame maple up top. This is a Pernambuco neck, which again, Pernambuco is one of those, it's what they make violin bows out of. And uh, it goes for retardedly high prices. And again, if you're paying, I mean, there's too much that you can pay for that. I like the. I usually do a uh, plate, face plate on the headstock of the same exact wood that I got from the body. It just, I like the way it looks. That way, when you stain it, you don't have two, you know, different colors. You know, because one piece of maple could take green, or stain a lot different than another piece of maple. And on the back, I have uh, curly black limba. And my say, what the hell is that? That's my cavity control plate. I use magnets to hold it on, and then you can pull it off to your fingers. Uh, that's the way I like to do it. I found that way to be more pleasing to me and more aesthetically pleasing. And I don't like having screws in there. Uh, you know, people, they, they need to get in there and change shit real quick. So pop it off. You can pop it back on. They're neodymium magnets, and they don't go anywhere. This is for a new prototypal thing. I'm using a ferrule block this time. So we're going to see how that all hands out and goes forward. But uh, we're going to go from start to finish and I'm not going to show you every single step like I'm not going to show you me spreading glue on the wood. Uh, that I, certain things I'm just not going to show because you should know how to spread glue on a board. And uh, I just you should there's just certain things that you should be pretty adept at already before you undertake this. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to wind your own pickups. We're going to go through everything. I'm going to teach you what I use to shield. I don't use black paint, shielding plain. I think it's cheap. And uh, we're going to talk about cost and we're going to talk about what what do you really charge for these. And uh, I'm I'm not as well known as other people, and part of that is you're paying for a name. But, at the same time, I don't think people have the money nowadays for a $3,500 production guitar, which is what a PRS is, a Gibson, you know. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money for a guitar. you got to think about how to attract customers, keep them, and how to 
appropriately price your products. Um, the highest end of my guitars, depending on inlay, now inlay is a whole different beast because the more intricate you want the inlay, the crazier it goes up. And inlay is crazy high because it's crazy tedious to do and no, nobody wants to do it so they charge you an arm and a leg. But uh, my standard model starts at 2500 The highest I go, within reason, is $4,000. You're thinking, God damn, $4,000, even $2,500 for a guitar. For... My, my stuff's all handmade. I don't have a CNC. Um, I do get one thing CNC'd, and we'll talk about that later on. But, uh, I mean, you just have to moderately price your product. People don't have thousands upon thousands of dollars I mean you got to make something that someone's going to get they're going to want to keep and they're going to want to go out there and play and if they get a dent in it or uh, like the finish or something they're not kicking themselves in the ass forever over it uh, you got to give some, someone something that's worth more than what you're charging for it and uh, I believe I do that and I've had other customers who think I do the same thing and uh I've built some guitars for some rock stars and uh, lots of compliments and it's really rewarding but it can be tedious. So uh, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, get your templates on here, center line, go through all that, how to cut it all out, how to glue it, and uh, how to find everything once it's been glued and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hey y'all take it easy.